Let's go to the men's tees. And the reason I skipped this pair is doubles at four. Like I said, it's a different animal. And it's the only pair of its kind on a skeet field. This is the only pair on the field where your second target's an outgoer. And that changes the game. Meaning when we shot doubles at three and five, and two and six, so they're really the same pairs. I mean, three, doubles at three and five is a lot more like two and six than it is four. We shot those pairs at three and five. I didn't tell you where to break high three, low five, did I? I told you I wanted consistent placement, but I wasn't really concerned with, you know, whether it's 20 feet before the stake or 10 feet before the stake, doesn't matter. Second target's an incomer. Only pair on the field with a second target's an outgoer. Now our first shot's all critical. When I shoot doubles at four, everything happens inside a corridor. And that corridor for high house first is bracketed by those two stakes. That short distance stake, and our center stake. Look at that short stake and imagine that you're breaking high four right over that stake. Put four feet of lead on that stake. At, I'm sorry. Put four feet of lead on that stake. Add some fall through into the move. By the time you get done breaking high four at that distance marker and get the gun into the turn, you're already at the trap house. And guess what? So is low four. So now all day, or at least the last hour, we've been talking about this eye shift across the barrel. You don't have that luxury here. <laughs> here, you break high four, rip into this turn, and look straight up. Because by the time you get done with high four on this end of the corridor and turn the gun around, you're at the other end of the corridor and so is low four. So it's break high four, rip into the turn, look straight up. You'll find the second target. Come out of that turn, and I'm on this second target for maybe eight or 10 feet. I come out of that turn and I'm looking for two things. First thing I'm looking for is that I'm matching gun speed with target speed. Because remember what I said earlier? My mistake here is going to be to see the second target fast and go, ha ha, boom, dead gun behind. So I got to make sure that I've come out and I'm going with it. That's the legs turning. And I'm matching gun speed with target speed and I'm going to look for something that resembles three feet of lead and pull the trigger. And I'm going to do that as it exits the corridor. Now that's a pretty aggressive second shot, but we were talking about that guy, that fighter pilot that I had in my, in my clinic in, in, uh, in DC. Well, he was in my clinic in California about two years ago, and uh, I got done explaining, he's a fighter pilot, flies F-18s for a living. So I got done explaining his Parrot 4, and he looked at me and he says, um, he says, so what you're telling me is it doubles at four is like a carrier landing. It's a controlled crash. I went, bingo, that's exactly what this is. Shoot high four past that window, like what happened to some of you guys at three, by the time you get that gun turned around, low four's gone. So this is shot placement, so cadence really starts to play a, a, a key role here. So breaking high four right there is gonna look and sound like this. Pull, bang, look up, bang. And look, everything's right here, isn't it? And, and this is why I like this corridor idea, because most people, when they shoot doubles at four, they're playing on the whole field. No, we're playing in this part of the sky. All of our gun movements right in here. And think about the eye shift. It's right in here. So if we think about dragging high four into this area and then just playing in here, it ain't that tough, really. Yeah. Now, we got some pretty precise gun movements in a limited area. That's where it gets a little dicey. But this ain't that tough. So everything's going to happen right in front of you. It's pull, bang, look up, bang. You get that on film? Yeah. Good. <laughs>